In his sophomore season, De'Aaron Fox is showing off his passing prowess from the point guard position. Nice pass from De'Aaron Fox to Willie Pauley Stein. Now Fox, what a pass. De'Aaron Fox, Fox, Pauley Stein! Which should come as no surprise, because he comes from a family accustomed to assisting. Where we can help is uh, financial support. We probably gave out mm, probably like 25,000 this year. De'Aaron's mother Lorraine is an 18 year breast cancer survivor who credits her community with helping her on her road to recovery. Not only the physical helping, but just the emotional helping too. So it's very important to have a support group. In this edition of King Central, Lorraine and De'Aaron share their story. When the doctor told me that I had breast cancer, I was scared and nervous and shocked and cried. And what they're doing to aid others affected by breast cancer. For me to be able to be put in this position uh, and to be able to help people through, you know, just playing a sport is definitely just, it's, it's amazing. Welcome to another edition of King Central. I'm your host, Jim Cozumore, in for Katie Hunter. Each and every month, we like to take you behind the scenes with the Sacramento Kings, and this time, we have a very special night for you. It is King's Breast Health Awareness Night, and we have two very special guests. One you probably are very aware of, King's point guard, De'Aaron Fox. But De'Aaron, you have brought a special guest. Let us know who this lovely lady uh, is. I brought my mother, Lorraine Fox. And why is she here? Uh, she's a breast cancer survivor. A survivor of 18 years. 18 Thanks for years. joining us here and congratulations. Thank you for having me. Well, let's tell uh, that story to everyone at home because this is something that has affected all of us. There's no question about that. When you first were diagnosed, what went through your mind? Um, I first, um, I found my lump myself uh, doing a monthly self-exam. I didn't do them every month. I just, you know, happened to do it that particular month. And I found a little knot. I, Waited a couple of days because I thought it would just go away. And since it didn't go away, I went in to see my doctor. And uh, when I first went to see my doctor, because I was 33, they didn't think that it was nothing. So they basically kind of blew it off a little bit. We could do an ultrasound, we could do a mammogram. And we did the mammogram. And the mammogram just showed it was a lump, but it didn't show, they couldn't tell if it was benign or malignant. And so after that, we did an ultrasound, and the ultrasound showed, again, a lump, solid, so they knew it wasn't a cyst. So they decided to go ahead and do a um, biopsy. And when we did the biopsy, from that Friday, and I got the news that Tuesday, those were like the three longest days of my life. And so on Tuesday morning, my doctor called me, and I was at work, I went outside to take the call. I took one of my coworkers with me because she knew I was waiting for test results. So when the doctor told me that I had breast cancer, I was scared and nervous and shocked and cried for about 30 seconds because I knew that I had De'Aaron, a toddler. He was less than three years old. And I also was raising my nephew, which I got him when he was five and a half. So I knew I had two boys that I had to take care of. And since my sister had just passed away a couple of years earlier from breast cancer, I had to jump into survivor mode. And so once I, the initial shock wore off, then I um, asked my doctor like, okay, so what do we do now? Like, what's the next step? And as soon as I got back to Houston, we scheduled an appointment with a surgeon to do a lumpectomy. They did the lumpectomy and they took some of the lymph nodes out just to test them to make sure that the cancer wasn't in those. And I got good reports from that. All the margins was clear, everything was good. They had got it all, but they still wanted me to do radiation. 
So I was fine with, okay, I could do radiation. I'm, I'm good with that. I went to the radiologist, and then because I was so young, the radiologist said, you know, because of your age, let's do, let's have you do chemo first and then radiation. Okay, well, I didn't want to do chemo because, you know, of course, well, sure, exactly. in glory. Right. And so I cried more when he said I had to do chemo <laughs> than he said I had breast cancer because I was like, oh my God, I don't want to lose my hair. And so after I, you know, he like, you know, I, you don't have to do it, but I really would, you know, recommend that you do it because they say they have it all, but you might have minute little microscopic cells floating in your body. We would rather do the chemo to make sure, sure, absolutely that we got it as opposed to just doing radiation. So I'm like, so after stop crying, <laughs> <laughs> took it in, it's like, okay, all right, let's just, just do everything we need to do to make sure that I remain healthy for my children. And before I even did my first round of chemo, I went to the barber shop and had them just cut my hair off. Really? Yes, I did. Oh my goodness. So that I, cause I, I wouldn't have to have the shock of losing it. I you were gonna own took it. it my, I own it. You own I it. I took it, I did it myself. Let me just say this. First of all, Lorraine, <laughs> you're a superhero. The story you've told so far <laughs> is incredible. And I know you've heard the story before, but you're hearing it again in such detail and a, she lost a sister and she adopted that child. When you hear the story now as a grown man, what do you think of? Oh, uh, well, first I remember, uh, I think of my, I mean, that's how I got my older brother. So, <laughs> um, otherwise he wouldn't have had Yeah, yeah so I always tell people, you know, my brother isn't technically my mom's child, but he was with my parents longer than I was, basically. So um, it's, always, it's always great, you know, it's not great that his mother passed away, but it's great that, you know, I kind of, I got a big brother out of it. And uh, just hearing the story is, it's crazy that I was so young and I don't, I don't remember any, I don't remember any of that. I can't, I couldn't tell you, you know, most of it, but uh, hearing the story in, in detail, I could probably tell you half of it at this point. How much does it speak to the strength of your mother and how she was able to keep it together? You didn't know that there was something going on. Ah, it's, it's crazy. I mean, there's no words for it. You know, you see so many people lose their lives to cancer and breast cancer and things like that. And uh, just knowing that my mom beat it and she's able to live and tell the story is, is simply just amazing to me. How much did it help having those two little guys around the house? Maybe giving you energy, sometimes taking the energy away from you, <laughs> but you knew you had to be there. I, I knew that I was not going to go down without a fight because I had those two and nothing, I mean, I still did every, I went to all the school activities, I, um, whatever homework, dropping them off at school, picking them up from daycare, whatever I needed to do, I still did it. So I never stopped. I still went to work every day. I would go in early so that I could get off early so I can go do my radiation treatment. So there was no like lag. Now we, I want to stay with your family because we know about the one sister who had passed from breast cancer. Yes. You have another sister. I have another sister who's been battling since 2013. It started in one breast. When she finished that treatment, um, about a year and a half or so later, it came in the other breast. And then I think um, before she even finished quite with that, it became a uh, skin. And now it has metastasized to other organs in our body. So I don't know, um, I know we probably had different strands of breast cancer because there's probably millions of them. But um, right now she's um, in hospice care because um, her oncologist have said we're gonna stop the treatment because the treatments are more harsh than the, what, how they are helping the cancer because the cancer is aggressive and it's spreading so the treatment is really not working. So basically they told her to, that they're sending her home and to basically make sure that all your affairs are in order. So. And I try to talk to her like every other day to see how she's doing, make sure she's eating and um, just, you know, checking in on her, you know, making sure that, you know, she's okay. She's okay with the prognosis and the decision, but I just want to know, let her know that I'm here, there for her, I'm praying for her every day. Well, a big part to that story, Lorraine, is the support that, that everyone needs when they're yes. in these circumstances. Yes. And I know that through the Susan G. Komen, uh 
Foundation that you've had some very special walks. Have you ever been on some of those walks together? I did a few of those walks. <laughs> Let me hear. Give me a story about some of the Susan G. Komen walks. Uh, I think the last one I did was was it my fre I think I my think freshman, freshman year of high year school because I had a cast on, on my left thumb. Yeah. I broke my thumb. Yeah. And uh, that was the last one. I think I did like three or four. It was a few times that me and my brother would complain about going, <laughs> but. You know, after we got there, it would be, you know, my mom, a lot of their friends, you know, a lot of our friends, and we would, we would walk and just have a good time and just enjoy ourselves. Yeah. How important is that support, whether it's through the Susan, Susan G. Komen Foundation, whether it is through church groups, whether it's friends or family, what does that help someone who's a survivor? It, it is so, so important because when I was going through mine, um, I was living in New Orleans then, and I had, um, I didn't really have any family in New Orleans. It was just me, De'Aaron, Quentin, and my husband. So my family was my church. And they would come over and clean my house, cook dinner. It, I mean, it was amazing. I was like, what well, y'all buy? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was, that was great. You know, not only the physical helping, but just the emotional helping too. So it's very important to have a support group. It's, it's very important. And you went one step further because I know you, every October you did something special, right? I decided, and I started doing that after I moved to Houston. Um, I started, I just decided, because when I got to Houston, I joined a um, cancer support group from the church, and we would do different activities or whatever, different get-togethers or whatever. So I just decided, you know what? I want to throw myself a pink party every year, and I'm going invi to invite all my friends, the uh, cancer survivors, um, when I first did it, it was just women. So I would have De'Aaron and Quentin and Aaron Check like, out. get out the house, go, <laughs> get out of here. The party starts at seven, get out. Don't, don't be in here at seven o'clock. I'll let you know when you can come home. So that was the first year and we had a good time and everything. And then the next year, one of the ladies brought a husband. I guess I didn't put in the invite. It was. Women's nope. only. <laughs> I didn't put it in the invite. So. I, you know, I'm looking out the window, I see people walking up, I'm like, oh my God, there's a man. So I call my husband, I'm like, hey, um, there's a man here. I'm gonna need you to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Since the second time, I even have guys calling, asking when is the pick party now. Really? Yes. You're kidding. They looking, they're looking, they look forward to it every year. Every October, yes. the yeah, pink yeah. party is on. Last, last Saturday in October, we just get together and celebrate life and just love and love on each other and we just have a wonderful time. Coming up on King Central. I feel like it was a small gesture, but it went a long way. I feel like it didn't just touch my mom. So I felt like that that was a that was a perfect platform, you know, for me to do that. NBA draft night. You had something special on. I'm gonna tear up. <laughs> Why did you wear what you wore? Explain what you were wearing and why you wore what you wore. Well, so we did something with JCPenney and they asked, you know, what did I want, you know, on the inside of my jacket, of my suit jacket. And, um, you know, I was thinking of stuff. You know, I thought about doing something for my parents. And then it wasn't, you know, the, the hardest design to make like, like that, but, you know, it was something really simple and just putting the breast cancer signs, a bunch of breast cancer signs in the, you know, the inside of my jacket. And I feel like it was a small gesture, but it went a long way. I feel like it didn't just touch my mom. It touched a lot of other, a lot of people. A lot of people, you know, would DM me or tweet me, and you know, just tell me how how grateful they were that I was a supporter. You know, that I that I always, you know, even before even before the draft, you know, there was always a lot of things you know I would say about breast cancer, and I even did it with you know pink shoes. I did it in high school. I did it in college a few times, and everyone always thought about that. But but you know, draft night was just such a big night. So many people, even people that probably aren't going to watch a single game until the playoffs, they were going to watch draft night. So I felt like that that was a that was a perfect platform, you know, for me to do that. Was it a surprise? Did you know it was coming? And how well, did you feel when you saw him open it up? We they talked about like they wasn't talking to me, but him and my other son was talking to each other about different designs or whatever they wanted to do for the inside of the jacket. So I didn't know it was set like absolute set. That's what they're gonna do. And actually, I didn't even see it until. Um, 
like some of my friends took pictures of it and sent it to really? me. Really? Because when they call his name for the draft, you know, you're hugging whatever, <laughs> and then you're like turning to sit back down, and he's gone. And so I didn't see him open the jacket on the stage. I saw him through my friends taking pictures and sending it to me. Oh, nice. So, yeah. That's neat. And what then, a like, surprise. all, my, all, all the, my friends was like, when he opened that jacket, I just started crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how neat. I was, yeah, and that, that was, you gotta be that pretty was proud. wonderful. Absolutely, That's absolutely. Neat. All right, the Foxhole Family Foundation. Tell me what that is and what it does. I started that, um, I wanted to do something after I retired and something for the whole family. So that's where the name, catchphrase comes from, Fox Whole Family Foundation, meaning all of the families involved in it. And what we're doing is um, we set up a foundation where we would um, support other 501c3s that are giving back to the community, helping women um, diagnosed with breast cancer. So that's one of the missions. And the other one, we also support underprivileged youth through sports and education. So that's those are the two uh, functions of the Foxhole Family Foundation. Um, this year was our first year getting our 501c3. And we probably gave out probably like 25,000 this year to different organizations in the uh, greater Houston area. Just to get our name out there and let them know that we're doing so. We've already um, partnered with two companies in, two organizations in the Houston area and one organization here in Sacramento. Do you rest ever? Do you ever rest? Is Never. Some, I'm telling you, you got everything going Never. on. And if it's not for you, it's for someone else. Well, you sleep when you're dead, I'm sorry. Okay, that's fair enough. Uh, you ask me why I don't sleep. There you go, exactly. See, it's, it's in the genes. Oh you know, I mean, you got stuff to do, man. You've worked with uh, the Alby Aware Breast Cancer Foundation. Uh, what type of work do they do? What makes them such a good partner? Well, because they help women uh, diagnosed with breast cancer from their initial screening all the way through their treatment. And it's women who, you may have some insurance, but your insurance doesn't cover everything. So they help them with a deductible. Um, they help them with uh, their bill paying. And whatever they need, whatever financial need that a woman might need going through breast cancer, I'll be aware helps them out. Where we can help is uh, financial support. Um, we partner with companies who are, organizations who are doing that, and we see that they're doing it. I mean, you know, you got national companies, but I like to see money work in the local neighborhood. Sure, yeah. stay in the community, yes. helping yes. those in the community. Yes. Yes. I want to know about the basketball camp. You held one on Mother's Day. Moms, grandmothers, aunts, many of these are, are survivors. What was yes. that What was that all about? What was it like? Honestly, it was just great seeing the energy that they brought. <laughs> they, that was good. They were, you know, you wouldn't, you couldn't walk in that gym and tell me, you know, what the camp was really about. You know, you would probably just think it was a woman's clinic or something like that. You couldn't, you wouldn't walk in and be like, you know, this is a, this is a, this is, a, this is an event for, you know, breast cancer patients and breast cancer survivors. You wouldn't, you couldn't walk in there and think that because everybody in there was full of energy and just had a great time. You know, you see the kids, some, some of the kids, you know, are too young to really understand what's going on, like I was at the time. But, you know, uh, all they see, all, all they saw was uh, the, the smile on their parents' faces and that just made them happy. Did you have fun? <laughs> Yeah. It was fun. Yeah, it's definitely now, unfortunately, great. I had um, hurt my knee, so I wasn't able to play. So I brought my ringer. Yeah, my, my dad. husband. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I brought my ringer so he could shoot for me. But uh, the next one, I, I plan on being healthy. She can play now to play. too. I could play. So. Really? Got a little yeah. game there. I got she played in college. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> she probably still was better. I bet. Coming up on King Central. Each assist that he get for the home games. He donates um, um, $100 to Kaiser. So we're going to be cheering on some teammates and yes, hit some buckets. Yes, like hit some buckets. <laughs>this means so much to you though that you have an initiative and it has to do with breast health awareness tell us about your initiative it's just to help it's just to help people who are kind of unfortunate and can't pay for can't pay for their treatment they're gonna announce the initiative at the game tonight he just says that he get for the home games he donates um, um, $100 to Kaiser 
for Albia Wear, uh, him and Kaiser's partners, to donate to Albia Wear $100 for each assist for the home games, up to $20,000 for this season. So that's what our goal is. So we're going to be cheering on some teammates and yes, hit some buckets. Yes, like hit Have some to. buckets. Right. <laughs> if it's a, a two-on-zero, oh, give it up. Let's uh, else get the easy two. Making the good play anyway. Yeah, there you go. Making the smart play, but making it's double smart. smart. But it's doubly it's, smart now. It's it doubly smart. It certainly helps everybody. And, yes. and I, uh, what does it mean to you that you are able to help some? This means so much, obviously, to your family and your mother especially. But, I mean, this is your, it's, this, this has to be such a deep meaning for you. Definitely. I mean, it's great that you could do so much with basketball. You know, uh, most players in the NBA have a foundation or do something that, you know, they're very passionate about. And it's not just basketball. So for me to be able to be put in this position uh, and be able to help people through, you know, just playing a sport is definitely just, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing what you can do with this. I'm just elated because I just think it's just so wonderful. And, you know, every dime that Albia Ware is collecting is going to help women who need it. So it's, it's just so gratifying that he's able to do it and, you know, just put you out there, put you in a good light. And then you're not doing it so you can get any recognition. You're doing it because people legitimately need help. And I appreciate and I'm really proud that he's doing that because people, you know, really need the help because you know, everybody don't have insurance co coverage. Everybody don't have financial means. And because he's able to give back to them, it's just, it's just so wonderful. I can tell by the smile on your face, it means an awful lot. It's yes, a really great yes, story. Uh, is there advice you would give someone right now if maybe they've found out that, that this is affecting them or a friend of theirs? Is there advice that you could give somebody? I would tell any, um, if you know that you have uh, breast cancer in your family, I would say don't wait until the uh, recommended 40 to 45 to get your first mammogram. I would tell women to, especially if you found out somebody else in your family had it, to go get checked. Go um, early. It, um, I know a lot of insurances, you know, they look at, uh, if, you don't, if you don't have a family history or if you under 40, they won't do the initial um, that um, mammogram. So you need to be your own advocate. And also, um, if you do get the diagnosis, find a support group in your area. Some Find a friend, find a church group, find somebody. Don't try to handle it by yourself. It's physically draining, emotionally draining, financially draining. So make sure that you reach out, let people know, because if people don't know that you're going through it, they can't help you. There's millions of women diagnosed with breast cancer. It's not always gonna be, everybody's not gonna have the same road through it, but you can get through it. Get checked, <clears throat> do your yearly, do your monthly self-exams, and if you do get diagnosed, make sure that you follow the treatment course and make sure that you have a support group. A support group is so, so important. Great advice. Thank you very much for that. Thank you for sharing your stories. And you raised a good one right there. Thank you. You should be proud. <laughs> thank you. We appreciate you sharing the stories and being here on Breast Health Awareness Night. And thank you so much for the work you're doing as well. Thank you.